What could an extra $200, $300, $500 a month do for your current financial situation? Could you spare 10, 15, maybe more hours a week? Perhaps you're retired, a stay-at-home parent, an empty nester, or you work full-time and you're just looking for something to do in those extra hours to help bridge that gap and raise the income. I have gathered some ideas that can consistently bring in money, depending upon how much work you decide to put in it. You can work as little or as much as you like. Some of them are ideas that you can do from home. Others are in your free time when you have to leave the house, but they're flexible in how allowing you to do what you can and still make money, feel useful, engage with the world, and potentially pursue a passion of yours. And they could pretty much work for any age range of adult. Now, I have gathered this information to share with you. I'm not promoting any site that I mentioned in this video. Maybe I find, I will discuss some sites that I found that you can offer these services on. Always do your research on them, as I say. Use these ideas to help further that research. And if there's something you want to do and maybe you're not that tech savvy, reach out to a friend or a family member that you trust that can help you get it started. My viewers have the best ideas. So in this video, I'm going to ask down in the comments below, if you know of a side job, if you've done one before that's been successful, share it with us, share your story. I would love to hear it. And I know that the people who watch this channel, who check out the comments, get great benefit from hearing those stories. Number one is pet care. Do you love animals? This could be walking dogs. This could be visiting a home while the owner is out of town to clean up and feed their cats. Think about how many people love their animals and would rather have that one-on-one -on -one interaction, somebody who could actually give their pet attention rather than dropping them off at a boarding facility where they stay in a kennel the majority of the time. I ran across a website called rover.com that offers services for people who are pet owners to be able to find people in their area to provide the services such as walking, boarding, daycare. And what I wanted to do was get an idea of what people were actually paying, what people were making for doing these services. So I put in my zip code and I looked first for doggy daycare. This is where, let's say you work from home and somebody just drops off their dog, you watch it for the day, you let it out, how much can you make? those rates were going anywhere from $25 to $50 a day. Dog walking was going anywhere from $10 to $25 a day. Boarding in your home overnight was going anywhere from $40 to $75 a day. Now on rover.com, they do take 20% of your fees. So if you charge $50, they take $750. Also keep in mind, you could still take this kind of an idea outside of a website and promote it locally on social media pages within your community. Number two is Amazon Flex. Have you ever seen those cars drop off your package that aren't the actual Amazon delivery trucks? They're just a random personal car. That is most likely Amazon Flex. Basically what this is, is if you like to drive around, you don't mind it, you find it fun because you could listen to your audiobook or your podcast, this might be for you. So I went on the website and what this is, is where you go to one place, it's called an Amazon delivery station, and you pick up packages for the area that you're going to deliver. You basically put them in your car you do have to use your own personal car and the site says that you can make anywhere from 18 to 25 dollars an hour so you go and you just select a block of time that you're going to deliver you go and deliver those packages and then you get paid now a side note here is talk to a tax professional because you're using your own car you should be able to write off the cost for using that car and the mileage number three are laundry services there are people out there who will pay you to pick up do their laundry and deliver it back. This is something people do called buying back their time. They outsource things that take up their time so that they can use their time in what they deem as more lucrative ways. And you will find that this is a common theme. Basically think about what services can you provide that others don't want to or don't have the expertise to do that they would buy back their time for having somebody else do. So I found a site called poplin.co that connects people who want this service with people who provide it. Now you get alerts for jobs that come up in your area. You can accept or decline them. Um, you go pick up the laundry, you wash it, dry fold, and you return it the next day. The website says that some of their top 100 laundry pros make up to $2,500 a month. 
I mean, even if you brought in a quarter of that, that would be $625 a month. As a side hustle, that's pretty great for doing something that you can do hanging out at home. Now, the site allows you to put in your zip code to see if they are operating in your area. So go ahead and check that out. If they aren't, certainly you could do this again, outsource it as an idea within the community. Number four is substitute teaching. Do you like kids and education? This is one that obviously is better for somebody who's retired or doesn't have a job during the day because you have to be available during the weekday. But our younger generation needs people who care more than ever to help them grow and learn. I have a child in elementary school and these positions are so needed. In my area currently, if you're a substitute teacher, you can make anywhere from $115 to $135 a day depending upon your experience and that's working about seven hours for the school day now the US average is about $20 an hour but what I recommend is just reach out to your local school district see what you can do to help and what they might allow a lot of times I know in our district they allow you to pick which schools you go to even what grade levels that you substitute in number five is a baking business from cake decorating to pies to custom sugar cookies have you seen those cake shows on either HBO or Netflix where they have the actual at-home bakers in the competition they'll have the chefs they'll have the people who have their own businesses but they'll have a lot of at-home bakers who bake at home who are really really good and talented at this is this something you are good and talented to add. This is a great word of mouth business. You can also set up at farmers markets. You can post on wedding and party forums, or you can just again post on your local social media sites. This is one that my mom did. I remember being a child at a young age and her going and taking a cake class at this local cake shop that was in our area and then after that she just had the talent she could decorate all these custom kid cakes and you know, anniversary cakes she did it all but it was a great little side hustle that she had for a stay-at-home mom number six is professional organizer this really actually is a thing i know someone who hired a local person who does this they came into their home and they charged them $80 an hour to organize the spaces. In particular, this person was getting ready for a baby and they had the means and they did not have the time. They hired them to do it. But people are so overwhelmed with their stuff. They don't want to spend the time doing it themselves and it isn't worth it to them. It is worth it to them to have someone come in and do it for them. Now, if this is something you are particularly skilled at and enjoy doing, why not think of doing it as a side business. You would need to look more into doing it. I'm sure there are tons of blogs and even probably YouTube videos that can help you get started with this one. Number seven is customer service agent from the comfort of your own home. And these days you can do it via email if you don't want to talk to people on the phone or just via chat. But there are so many places that you can find these types of jobs and websites that can help you do that. Check it out if it's something that you are interested in. Number eight, selling your creations. What do you make or what can you make? You can sell your creations on Etsy. I'm sure you've heard of that site. You can have set up at local farmer's markets. You can go on your community Facebook marketplace. You can also visit local shops in your area. I love this one as an outreach. Maybe there's small boutique shops and you've got something unique. You can stop in and say, hey, I love your store. Here is what I make and I would love to sell my crafts here. I'm just gonna drop one off for you. This is my gift to you if you're interested in calling me here is my information it's a great way to get yourself out there so some crafts that sell if you want some ideas to kind of generate things but certainly this genre is not limited to this list but personalized items are big you know t-shirts cups tote bags anything with your name on it or somebody's nickname digital prints and wall art is huge where you can create things maybe you are into graphics and you can create things where people can print them out they can download the digital file handmade jewelry is a big one printables think about invitations party games study guides things that you can customize you know for birthday invitations canva c-a-n-v-a is a great website that you can help do this it's a great site i use it for my youtube information also woodworking think about kids toys home decor games that you can create use that list but anything that you can create and start selling you love doing it it's your passion making it and you can have an income from it Number nine is cleaning services. Do you like to clean and find that you are super efficient and detailed doing it? There are so many people who will pay someone to clean their house. Again, it's that buying back their time 
theme. You can decide how small or big you make this. Maybe you want to only do it a couple of times a week and you've got a few close clients. Or you can also expand this into a full-time business. We have a friend who quit her job at a law firm and within a couple of months had more than made up for her salary with the clients that she took on. Number 10 is babysitting, nanny services, after school care. This is something my grandmother did back in the 80s and 90s for extra income in her pocket and it was an affordable and trusted alternative for the moms who knew her. A lot of people need varying degrees of childcare rather than just nine to five, five days a week. So perhaps they just need half days or two days a week where daycare centers are gonna charge them full time regardless if they use it or not. And it's not just a teenage deal anymore. The national average for babysitting services is over $20 an hour. Maybe there are people in your local community that just need somebody to pick their kids up from school and watch them from a couple of, for a couple of hours until they get home at five o'clock. I found a website called care.com. This is where people go to find the services and where you can advertise those services. But again, reach out to your local community, use those social media sites if you have them and see what you could offer and who's looking. Number 11 is tutoring students. So are you a teacher, retired teacher, maybe a college student or a math, science or computer professional that you can use these skills? Perhaps it's a language that you can teach. The pay rates on these are going to completely vary based on your experience and your level of expertise. But there are some sites that you can go on to get connected with people. Two of them that I found are tutor.com, T-U-T-O-R.com and then tutorme.com. Number 12 is homebound care for seniors or those with health challenges that often need help around the house. Now this can be anything from driving them to their doctor's appointments, doing the dishes, making sure they have lunch or dinner, doing their laundry, the things that help them still live an independent life as much as they can. Now there are sites for this as well, again care.com that I mentioned earlier, but this is again can also be a word of mouth situation. This is one that my mom also did for a time when I was a child. There was a, she was a stay at home mom and we had a family, we knew a family with a gentleman who was bed bound and his wife took care of him. So my mom would go in for a few hours to take care of him to give his wife time off to do give her a break <laughs> to so she could also you know relax or just run errands or attend to anything else that she needed to do. Number 13 is a general handy person. There are always times when somebody needs this. There are so many small, large, cumbersome, or just things that people don't know how or don't want to do, whether it's cleaning gutters, painting, cleaning out, removing junk or trash, assembling furniture, hanging a ceiling fan. I found a couple of sites where you can go and find people who do these types of activities, so therefore, or services, and therefore you could also go on them and be one of the people who do is the provider. So the first one that I found was Thumbtack, Thumbtack, T-H-U-M-B-T-A-C-K.com and TaskRabbit. Com. This is also a good one to advertise via word of mouth or on that neighborhood Facebook page. I know, for instance, in my neighborhood, everybody here knows of the particular person, whether it is something from electrical to a roofing issue to intricate woodwork. We have this one specific person that is a person who knows how to do it all. So we know where to go. So if you know of anybody who is very handy or maybe you're handy yourself, this could be one of those ideas to look into. Number 14 is music lessons. This came up in a conversation I was having recently with someone and they mentioned that their daughter was looking into piano lessons. She really wanted to learn how to play the piano. And so I just sat and I inquired a bit. I was like, how much is that going for nowadays? And the cost made my jaw hit the floor. The cost for per student per hour was $150. I guess it makes sense for such an art form that we're, we're losing day by day. But do you play an instrument? I mean, maybe you play the guitar. There are sites and music stores that you can advertise on and give lessons at. You can also advertise these on your local community pages as well. But if you are musically inclined, why not also teach the next generation how to do it as well and make extra money? Number 15 is photography. And this is one that I am getting into. As a part of YouTube, I've learned a lot about cameras and cameras are becoming more inexpensive, especially if you can get them used. And there are a ton of videos on YouTube that can teach you how to use them. And there are different ways you can make income with photography. There's obviously the general you know, taking pictures of families, professional headshots, events, etc. And there's a site called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, which is a 
freelance website that connects people looking for specific services to people who provide those services. But there's also a market for selling stock photos. For instance, let's say a dog grooming business might go online to look for a stock photo to use in their website or their, their marketing materials. So a photographer might take a picture of a dog getting groomed, maybe a snail's trim, maybe you know with bubbles in the bath, and then the person who took those photos can put them on sites like Shutterstock or Getty Images, where the people who are looking for those images can go and find them and purchase the rights to use them in their marketing materials. Now, if you are doing any of these ideas or you are creating your own, doing your own side job, depending upon what you're doing in the area, you may need permits or some other requirements such as registering a business. Do your research on that. You may also need insurance depending upon what you are doing or you might want it in certain cases. Also, you will have to pay taxes based on the income that you get. So make sure that you set aside portions of the money you do bring in so that you can pay those taxes. For more information on that, check with your local CPA. If you enjoyed this video and it was helpful, certainly share it with other people that you might also think can find it helpful and useful. If you enjoyed it, click on that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you back for more videos.